one, of course. Stand in front of me, Peters. On the 13th of August, Peters, you were rude to Dr. Wilde. I warned you of the consequences on that particular occasion of a repeat performance. This morning, we've had a problem once again with CCF, about which I've spoken to you. Once again, you are argumentative. And, more importantly, once again, you have been insolent. We've now reached the end of the line. I warned you. I made it very clear that if you were to step in front of me on a disciplinary matter again, that would be the end of your time here. And it is the end of your time here. You are expelled from Charles Darwin Grammar School forthwith. Leave my study, please. Mr. Williams, would you collect this boy? I just think it's pure stupidness, to be honest, because I weren't that bad. They just wanted me out, and I've known that from the start. Clearly, Peters doesn't see anything wrong with his behaviour. It's a sort of low-level disruption that bedevils classrooms up and down the country today. No wonder teachers are leaving the profession in their droves. Peters didn't like doing anything that he wasn't absolutely sure he was going to succeed in. He caused trouble, uh, he tried to get out of things, and I'm afraid that uh, he wasn't up to the standards required here. The rest of the pupils have yet to hear the news of Peter's expulsion. You don't call Mr. Williams a liar. Because <laughs> so, he turned around and looked at him and then he just got of <laughs> One girl is particularly worried about Peter's fate. For what we have received, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. Amen. I have uh, one announcement to make uh, for persistent bad behaviour and for an incidence of insolence to a member of my staff. This morning, I expelled Peters. He's no longer a pupil at this school. I give it to you for a point of information. The moment of truth has arrived. The children are about to find out who's got the most out of a 1950s education, the girls or the boys. Now, onto the serious stuff. I'm about to award the certificates for O-level examinations. O-level grades ranged from 1 to 9. Grades 1 to 6 were passes, grades 7 to 9 were failures. We'll start with the girls. Victoria Buxton, Biology 9, Chemistry 9, Physics 8, Mathematics 9, English Language Four. Vicky Buxton was predicted 10 A's at GCSE, but she only passed one O-level. Ashley Walters, Biology 8, Chemistry 9, Physics 9, Mathematics 9, English Language 6. In her GCSEs, Ashley was predicted A's and B's. At O-level, all she could do was scrape one pass. On to the boys. For these GCSE high flyers, it's a poor show. The girls mustered just 13 O-level passes between them. But have they beaten the boys? William Ho, Biology 9, Chemistry 9, Physics 9, Mathematics 8, English Language 5. William Ho was predicted A's and B's at GCSE. He only passed one O-level. Nathan Anadugbe, Biology 8. Chemistry 9, Physics 8, Mathematics 9, English Language 9. Nathan was predicted A's in GCSE Science, but at O level he failed the lot. In the academic competition between the boys and the girls, the winners overall are the girls. Yeah! 